my name is Carsten Eckert. I'm head of digital manufacturing uh, at TÜV Rheinland Consulting in Cologne, Germany. And I will talk today about competitive and resilient production through digitalization and this in context industry for the low and GAIA-X. So in the beginning, I want to introduce you with Industry 4.0 and how this was coming up in the uh, early 2010 years. Uh, Industry 4.0 was a strategy, strategy project of the German government in, that, uh, in its uh, high-tech strategy 2020. And it was launched and mentioned the first time by business economists in 2011 at the Hannover Fair in Germany. So from this, this was the start and this was uh, working on implementation recommendations. They was published first time in 2012. And uh, in this expert group of um, business economists, uh, they continue working on it and the final report of the implementation recommendations for Industry 4.0 was published uh, at the Hanover Fair in 2013. The concern of Industry 4.0, uh, or of the German government for Industry 4.0, was uh, taking up the rapid social and technology development in this industrial area and to define some structures uh, for cooperation of all stakeholders and actors. And Last but not least, to secure production capacities in a high-wage country like Germany and also in Europe. Okay. So next, uh, it's a little bit an overview and uh, about the stakeholders of Industry 4.0, and we call it in a triangle of digital transformation. Let's start from the uh, from the top. Um, on the top is the uh, platform Industry 4.0. This platform Industry 4.0 was uh, founded by three industry associations, if you can see in the middle on the top. It's uh, VDMA, it's the uh, uh, association, association of mm, machine manufacturers. And in the middle, said VIE, um, is the uh, association of electrical industry. And uh, last in this, uh, of these three is uh, Bitcom. It's uh, association of IT and communication, but in the, uh, now we call it just the association of digitalization in Germany. This uh, three uh, associations was uh, working on uh, the uh, development of uh, platform industry 4.0 and they established uh, it with uh, different working groups. They are working or in these working groups are working expert communities from industry and research on different aspects of industry 4.0 such as uh, communication or security or also new business models. And uh, in 2016, uh, these three associations hand over the leading of uh, Platform Industry 4.0 to the two federal ministries, uh, German ministries. First, uh, the Ministry for Economic Affairs and Energy, and uh, on the right hand side, the Federal Ministry of Education and Research. Since this time, uh, the platform industry 4.0 is led by the German government. So in this industry for the uh, platform industry 4.0, they are, they are working on a conceptual and strategy level. And they are also um, working on international cooperation strategies and on the integration of small and uh, mid-sized enterprises. On the right hand side, you can see from this in platform industry 4.0 coming the input for the uh, 
level low for the lower level. It's uh, on this slide, which is uh, the Standardization Council of Industry 4.0. And on the right hand side, the LNEI 4.0, it's a Labs Network Industry 4.0. The Standardization Council Industry 4.0 is responsible for uh, the specification and uh, standard standardization of the recommendations uh, coming out from the platform Industry 4.0. So as you can see, it's in initiation of cross-sectoral standards, coordination of uh, national and international standards, and cooperation with international um, fora and consortia. On the right hand side is this uh, labs network industry 4.0. This is uh, responsible for the validation of the uh, recommendations coming out from the uh, platform industry 4.0. And they do it in pilot projects and proof of concept. And uh, yeah, and the validated uh, returns or sort of results going back to the Standardization Council and also the Standardization Council give the guidelines of relevant standards to the lab network industry for that hope. In the middle, to the left and the right hand side uh, of inter the platform industry for that hope, you can uh, get an insight of the international uh, collaboration of this platform. So on the left hand side, you can see the European countries uh, we are collaborating. It's France, Italy, Netherlands, Austria, Switzerland, Poland, Denmark, Sweden, Finland, and Spain and UK. And on the right hand side, you can see there is also on a uh, outside European um, collaboration with the IIC of uh, US, with the Chinese uh, um, and uh, Japan, indeed also uh, South Korea and India. So, Industry 4.0, what is it really? I have divided in two sides, like the left hand side in this box. It's what you can see, it's what we uh, have already today. Uh, and this is uh, in terms of uh, intercompany. We have cloud, we have networks, we have uh, factory automation with internet access, and we also have, we deliver and we are using internet-based services. So what is new in Industry 4.0? And this is, you can see in the uh, box on the left hand side. It's the value creation from cross manufacturing exchange of information. Uh, we are going from com intercompany intranet to uh, internet to collaboration between companies uh, uh, via internet. And the next, um, this is a really important uh, point on the uh, the third uh, point is uh, manufacturer independent and industrial neutral standards of communication services and semantics. It's a really a key factor for the success of what we see next, Industry 4.0 and um, GAIA-X. So from that, if we realize, uh, if we get the uh, three points on the left hand side realized, uh, then we see multitude of new applications and business mo models where we emerge in the next time. As I mentioned before, Industry 4.0 was launched in 2011. So there was a review in last year, in 2019, and there's a new uh, vision they call it Vision 2030 for Industry for the Toe. And the underlining uh, headline is uh, Shaping Digital Ecosystems Globally. So what is uh, necessary 
for these digital ecosystems. Um, there are three uh, aspects we see here on the left hand side interoperability. The cooperation and open ecosystems permit plurality and flexibility. Interoperability is really a key aspect for this digital ecosystems. It's uh, European wide, but also globally. And there are uh, three uh, three points. They are uh, yeah, important for that. It's regularity framework we need. We need standards in integration, and we need decentralized systems and artificial intelligence. The next uh, aspect uh, in this uh, vision is uh, on the right hand side, uh, on the top, uh, sovereignty. So the scope of actions inhibits competitiveness and control of personal data in digital business models. The key facts are uh, key um, facts in this is that technology development, we need security and we need the right digital infrastructure for that. The last uh, aspect is sustainability. The modern industrial value creation ensures a high standard of living. So it's the key facts of decent work and education and very raising point is uh, climate change mitigation and the circular economy. economy. Uh, social participation is also a key fact of that. Okay, if we see, or if we are coming from Industry 4.0, what was the more initiative in, in, uh, in Germany, but with uh, international um, cooperation. And uh, as we can, as we have seen before, is uh, the vision for Industry 4.0 is digital ecosystems globally. So let's start with Europe. And uh, this is, I guess, the, uh, one of the points why Gaia X was uh, coming up. And uh, as you can see here, there's Gaia X is motivated by uh, several challenges uh, to the digital, European digital economy. What we can see on the left hand side, we have decentralized processing of locations. Or processing locations. No. Um, we have a lack of transparency and sovereignty over stored and processed data and infrastructure. This is a really um, main point of that. We have sector specific data and a lack of ontology. Um, yes, we have in different uh, industry domains, we have uh, specific uh, data spaces. And we have uh, different ontologies for these data spaces. So if we want to connect them together, we need uh, to overcome this uh, sector specific um, uh, yeah, the sector specific um, specifications. And uh, on the right hand side, uh, we, we see here that we have uh, multiple technology stacks uh, for in this area. We have an insufficient uh, clarity about the applicable jurisdiction. What we don't see is the uh, uh, is a widely accessible uh, API application programming interface. What makes difficult uh, for the interaction and the uh, to access data spaces and we have a multiple stakeholders and difficult uh, accessibility of existing data and infrastructure services 
And all this uh, should be a, a Gaia X should be a, a given answer to all these challenges and threats. Let's see in the middle, it's the uh, overall uh, picture for, of, uh, of Gaia X. Uh, as you can see, it's three parts. Let's start from the uh, bottom. Uh, the red part is a sovereign, sovereign uh, infrastructure what we need. Uh, in the middle, it's European policies and a code of conduct. And in the uh, other part, it's the sovereignty, sovereign uh, data exchange. So we start with the creation of digital infrastructures and ecosystems for innovations, trusted environments between partners and interoperable links between smart services applications and infrastructure services. This will increase transparency and att attractiveness uh, of digital services. The reduce of barriers and compliance service usage enables the development of new services and products. Data sovereignty, strength of digital sovereignty of business, science and government and society. And last but not least, the reduction of dependencies. So reduce of private and business consumer dependency of single providers, uh, control over locations and regularity, environment of data, sto stored data. And as I mentioned before, reduce sector specific dependencies. Now we come more in a, a more detailed um, picture of uh, Gaia X. And as you can see in this overview, Gaia X should be provide a user friendly and homogeneous uh, ecosystem for services and data. And let's start again from the, uh, from the bottom, uh, the infrastructure ecosystems, and you see the different uh, parts of, of the uh, infrastructure ecosystems like network and interconnection providers. Uh, second, the uh, uh, CSPs, what is uh, cloud service providers, or HPC in the middle, it's high performance computing. And we have, as mentioned before, sector specific clouds. And last but not least, uh, edge devices, where also data can be stored. At this level, uh, we see uh, uh, on the right hand side, uh, which aspects has to be uh, uh, defined. Uh, this is a technical architecture. We need uh, architecture of standards and we need commercial policies. And we need also for compliance, uh, legal regulatory and policies. In the middle, uh, there are the uh, Gaia X Federation services. In this uh, federation services, uh, there are four uh, blocks or pillars uh, like identity and trust, sovereignty data exchange, federated catalog, and compliance. This uh, should ensure uh, interoperability and uh, trust and sovereignty of services. In the other part, we can see on a level, uh, the different data spaces from the uh, 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 different uh, sectors or domains like industrial, smart living, mobility, financial, public, health, and all have different uh, data spaces, different uh, uh, structures of data, uh, different semantics, and uh, this has to overcome uh, with Gaia X. And on top of that, uh, if we connect all these um, data spaces together, then we have a cross domain or cross 
and sector innovation in advanced smart services. We can build new marketplaces and new applications such as AI, IoT analytics, our big data. As mentioned before, uh, at the moment, this uh, Gaia-X uh, has eight domains and user per perspectives uh, to create data spaces. And you can see here, for each uh, domain, there are different uh, use cases. They are already defined in, in Gaia-X. So uh, the number is already more than 40 we have defined and uh, in some domains there are more and some it's not so much but in this from this um, use cases which are defined for Gaia X should be uh, defined the requirements for the implementation of Gaia X or implementing our first specification of Gaia X. I want to explain uh, Gaia-X a little bit more in detail uh, on a use case, which is here, collaborative condition monitoring. And this should demonstrate how a framework of collaboration can contribute to develop self-determinate business models for this uh, use case. And uh, it's now in the uh, part uh, below in the uh, infrastructure, you see three different uh, data storages with uh, hosted by different uh, service providers. So, and this is uh, the physical storage. And uh, at this level, we have just the uh, infrastructure application and data portability, and uh, we need a uh, interoperability. In the middle, uh, the Gaia X Federation services uh, solve the, the points on the right hand side like uh, out of authentication and authorization and data connector policies and attributes. Uh, it's uh, for uh, identity validation and access rights and also usage control and also responsible for semantic semantic and uh, interoperability. On top uh, we see the different companies they are using different data spaces uh, and can uh, access not only the company data space also uh, data spaces from other companies can create uh, advanced uh, smart services from that, like collaboration uh, condition monitoring. So I can um, use um, data from a special machine in different locations. So, and I can uh, monitor the conditions and make some analytics and, uh, yeah, on that. So Gaia-X is increasing added value and the content consistency of service behind the individual use case. If we take this all together and at, this, uh, at the uh, COVID-19 uh, pandemic, pandemic we are uh, facing at the moment. Um, there are some consequences and there's a position paper uh, of the platform industry for the DAO published uh, earlier this year. And they identify 10 propositions for the future digital business models for industry for the DAO in a post-corona economy. 
And there are three new strategic priorities. What we're facing is a boost of digitalization and new digital business models. Second, we, we see a flexibility and agility becomes the basis for competitive competitiveness. Uh, we need to uh, react flexible on changes in our um, supply chain or on market demands. This is uh, mean by uh, point two. And the resilience of uh, the value network as a new business case. Yeah, it's like uh, we will see uh, what we see already. It's a uh, um, it's a platform economy to um, offer uh, production capacities as a service. Yes, and on the uh, middle, on the right hand side, we see new business models. We see a localization of manufacturing and demands adoption of product and process architectures. We see new ecosystems and marketplaces are emerging. And uh, innovative revenue models are getting traction. On the right hand side, uh, it's also infecting or affecting new work and organization aspects. So competence requirements are changing radically. And physical distancing of production or in production make remote services more increasing and more important. And flexibilization of work fosters. This means new forms of organization and learning are necessary. So this flexibilization we're facing like uh, that employees maybe can't come to work because of they have to stay in quarantine or they are getting a um, COVID-19 infection. So all this and uh, we see it might we need a new flexibility in organizing our work. And number 10, last but not least, is industry for the dough. We see as an enabler for sustainability. This all together uh, and uh, our um, Conclusion is that the vision pre COVID 19 is also the vision what we can with what we can continue post or after COVID 19. It's uh, we are um, already address the right uh, aspects of digital ecosystems. Thank you for your attention.